April 26th will mark the 35th anniversary of the terrible Chernobyl disaster when a Ukrainian nuclear reactor in what was then the Soviet Union went into meltdown. A vast exclusion zone was set up and it's reckoned it will perhaps need to be in place for at least the next 20,000 years. Everyone living in the vicinity of that exclusion zone had to suddenly drop everything and flee, most never to return. Pripyat was a town of 50,000 people built in the 1970s to house those who worked at the nuclear power plant and their families. Virtually overnight, the town was abandoned by all its inhabitants because it was far too close to Chernobyl. And for 35 years now, the town has been more or less untouched by human hands. The buildings and roads and signs of 20th century living are slowly falling into ruin. But up through the paved streets and half-ruined buildings, nature has burst forth. The town is quickly becoming again what it must have been long before men settled there a large forested area. Nature is recolonizing it, steadily reclaiming it so that in a few more years, all the signs of human life, the decay and ruin brought about by human action, will be ever more transformed into and consumed by the ever-increasing forest. The ground upon which that poor town was built is quickly returning to its original state, but hidden in amidst the forest, you can still find here and there signs of the old decimated fallen city. I thought about this ruined city being reborn as a lush green forest when I reflected upon what we mean when we say that the resurrection of Jesus is the dawning of a new day for the world. Jesus is risen from the dead, And his resurrection marks a dramatic change in this world. But sometimes it doesn't feel much like anything has changed. We still have sin. We still have suffering. We still have death stalking us. What difference has Christ's victory over sin and over death made? Christ's resurrection is supposed to have have ushered in a new world but at times it might not look that different from the old one. Only the eyes of faith will allow us to see things differently and to understand that all is not as it appears. It might appear that the world is as bad as it ever was, maybe worse. It might seem like the light of Christ has been reduced to a flickering flame and the darkness is gaining the upper hand. It might seem that way, but it is not so. The ruined city of Pripyat is being transformed from its post-nuclear decay by the ever-advancing new life and growth of the forest. And in a much more glorious and spiritual way, the power of Christ's resurrection and the new life it ushers in for the world is ever increasingly colonizing the territory that has been vacated by the evil one. For Christ has driven him out. He is no longer prince of this world. Christ is the risen and conquering king, and the city of man, half in ruins because of sin and the devil's schemes, belongs again to Christ and is now being taken over by that life and power of Christ. And the same is true of the devastation that any of us have experienced in our own lives. We might think that we have made a mess of our lives and that they are somehow spiritual wastelands in tatters and ruins, But it is precisely that kind of life that Jesus comes to redeem and save. There is nothing so broken that he cannot fix or cannot restore. Human nature was beautiful once, then it fell. And now it is destined in Christ to be more beautiful than it ever was. Though that beauty, to paraphrase the second reading, is hidden with Christ in God. It is really only fully and clearly visible from heaven's perspective. 
The message of Easter proclaims to us that Jesus took the cross, a symbol of oppression, fear, shame, guilt, and death, and he overturned it. He took it and reshaped it so that it is now a symbol of life, divine power, grace, mercy, love, and freedom. It is still a stark and hard reality, but it is bursting forth with the life of Christ. When Jesus stepped out of that tomb, he stepped into a new world, one that he had utterly transformed, though it still has signs of ruin in it. So we have a choice. Do we look for the ruins? Do we focus on all that is dark and all that is going wrong? Or do we look to the light and the things the Lord is doing? If you could go to Pripyat today, you would see a lush green forest. But if you want, you could seek out the ruins in among the beautiful woodlands. And if we focus on all that is wrong, all that is darkness in this world, then it will fill us with darkness. But if we look to the light, we will be filled with light and be able to disperse the darkness. The eyes of faith are always looking for the light, even in the midst of great darkness. Who will roll away the stone? That question we are told in the Gospel of Mark is what the women were asking as they approached the tomb of Jesus. In Matthew's Gospel account of Easter morning, we find the answer. The angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled away the stone. The fact that the angel did this is very significant. It shows that this was an act of God, not of man. That this business of the resurrection of Jesus was an act of God. Something that only he could do. The tomb's stone was too big to be moved by those women. And what it represented was too horrible, too heavily burdensome on them also. For the stone rolled over the tomb of the Lord they loved was a crushing weight upon them. A dead weight. It was symbolic of the crushing weight of hopelessness, grief and even despair. For as the disciples on the road to Emmaus later that day will say to Jesus, though they did not recognize him, our own hope had been that he would be the one to set us free. You see, their hope had died on Good Friday. The stone was rolled away. In its place, it was a sad and hard reality. Moved by the Lord, it is now a sign that the Lord has begun something new. That large stone can represent many things in our lives, but always difficult things. Who will roll the stone away? For each of us in our own lives, there are big stones which are burdensome weights. For some it is constant sickness. For some it's the chains of addiction. For some it's grief and loss. For some it's the burden of poverty. For some the weight of mental illness. For some it is the burden of hurts and wounds which they have received in the past, but which still weigh heavy upon them and hold them back. And it could be any number of other things which cause us to cry out, Who will roll this stone away? Who will deliver me from my present woe? How and when will life ever get back to some form of normality and peace? I think the past year's experience of the pandemic has been for all of us an immense challenge at so many levels. Some of us have weathered the storm well and bore the burden heroically. For those people, this pandemic has strengthened their resolve and they have grown immensely because they've had to dig deep. But perhaps many of us, and I include myself in this category, have found that the weight of the restrictions, the isolation, the challenges it presents, and the constant media barrage of what I have come to call project fear has not brought out the best in us, or it has caused us immense difficulties and shown up our weaknesses in ways that we weren't aware of before. I have found myself to be less patient, less mentally and spiritually resilient, less courageous and less able to cope than I would have thought myself to be capable of. And I know that I'm not alone in that. 
I have to say that this Lent, I was longing for this Easter day to dawn, longing to celebrate the rolling away of the stone from the tomb of Christ in the hope that I would experience a rolling away of the spiritual stones which press down on me. It is Easter, so I pray that the light of Christ would scatter the darkness within and without, that the weight of his risen glory would raise up all that is crushed, flattened and deflated in my own heart and in the hearts and minds of many of you joining me this morning. We celebrate the resurrection, and it is a joyful celebration, even in the midst of the trials that have beset us for more than a year now. We still live in the midst of a pandemic, but we are reminded by Easter that Christ is risen. He has overcome the great enemy, death, and faith in him banishes one of death's great weapons, which is the fear of death. And oh, how our world has been gripped by the fear of death this past year. The virus has infected millions and unfortunately brought death to many. But the fear of death has infected to some extent almost every heart on the planet. This Easter, I ask the risen Lord who has conquered death itself to drive out the fear which has infected the hearts of billions. At the Easter vigil, I carried the Easter candle into the completely dark cathedral. The flame on that candle was tiny compared to the size of this building. But that single flame I could see was pushing back the darkness, just that single flame. And I thought, now that's what our faith can do. Can do. A small flame of faith can do much to drive out the darkness. A little bit of faith can go a long way. It punches way above its weight. So today, I don't know what darkness afflicts you. I don't know what heavy stone weighs you down and threatens to crush the life, light and joy out of your life. But it is my joy to proclaim to you, Alleluia, Alleluia, Jesus is risen. And I believe in him, I trust in him, I hope in him. Though I do not believe, trust or hope as much as I should. He is my light and my salvation. He is the one who drives out fear. He is the one who gives joy and strength and peace when we need them so badly. Today is Easter. I invite you, at least for today, not to focus on all that is going wrong or that is hard or oppressive. But take the time and effort you normally might use to focus on your problems and prayerfully refocus on he who is the solution to those problems. We can find in our own lives stones, obstructions that seem immovable. All of us have difficulties of one sort or another which we just can't seem to overcome. But today's gospel assures us that what we ourselves cannot achieve through our own effort, the grace of God can do with ease. That tombstone over Christ's grave was large and immovable, but not for Christ. Put your trust in him, for no one can do what he can do, and there is no limit to what he can do. Nothing is impossible to God. Christ is risen from the dead. Nothing can hold him down. Nothing can hold him back. There is no need to fear. The risen Lord fights for you. The risen Lord is with you. Alleluia.